YouTubers, Pastor Bob. Well, I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. It's a Saturday morning, day after Christmas. I hope you guys all survived. Uh, I did, barely, but we made it. I want to talk to you for just a minute about freedom over bondage. And Exodus 20, 2-3 says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So what is this path to freedom? When the Lord says that I brought you out of the house of bondage, you shall have no other gods before me. What that implies is, is when you have another God, something comes into your life that gets in between you and God, that leads to bondage. So this is the path to freedom. The first leg is found in Mark 9, 7. And it says, And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son. Hear him. So in other words, they're up on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, Jesus, Peter, James, and John. And this cloud comes down and overshadows him, and the voice says, This is my son. Listen to him. In other words, God's telling us, listen, every single thing you need, everything you need to know is all found in him. So God speaks, we listen, no debate, no argument. Then John 14, 6, Jesus goes on to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. What he did not say is, I am a way, a truth, and a life. No, the, not a, the, the only way. John 8, 31 to 32, this is what it says. Then said Jesus to those which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. People, this is one thing that you have to learn from John 8, 31 and 32. And go get your Bible and write it down in your Bible. And that is this. If the truth shall make you free, then error shall bind you. Anything in your life that has you bound is error. Now, the problem is most people who are in bondage, most people who are living in error, they don't know that they're in bondage and they don't know that they're in error. And they probably remain there for one reason, and that's fear. People remain in bondage for fear. Now listen, if they put you in a prison cell, say like you got obviously uh, falsely accused and falsely convicted, and you got sent to prison. You know, if they put you in that prison cell and locked the door, eventually you would feel safe. I mean, all around you in the prison is violence, people stabbing each other, all kinds of stuff going on. But as long as you're in your cell and the door's locked, you're fine and you feel fine. Pretty soon it becomes normal. Matter of fact, if they opened the cell door, you would be afraid to come out because you actually, you've grown accustomed to your bondage. People fear serving God because they have a misconception. They're gonna lose their freedom. People think if, they're going, if they serve God, they're going to lose their freedom when in fact the exact opposite is true. Now let's get back to that prison for a second. What if you went to prison and you had the best cell in the entire prison, right? I mean, your cell was the best. You were the envy of the whole prison. I mean, you, you had a big cell. It was twice as big as everybody else's. You had tons of room. You had a 65-inch TV. They let you have a laptop. You had a cell phone. You had a private bathroom with a shower. I mean, your cell was just the best. 
Well, what if they came down and opened up the whole prison and said, everybody in here, you're free to go, and everybody left. And you're thinking, man, I don't want to leave. I have the best cell in the whole place. I've got everything I need. I do not want to leave. And why do you not want to leave? Because of fear. This is what it says in Psalms 102, 19 and 20. For he was looking down from the height of the sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the groanings of the prisoners, to loose those that are appointed unto death. People listen. You keep hearing everybody say, I know every time I look at Facebook, that's all people post. Oh man, we've only got six more days left of 2020. I can't wait for this year to be gone. 2020 has been so rough. The pandemic, people losing jobs. This year has been terrible, and it has. 2020 has been a terrible, terrible year. But people, 2021 is not going to be any better. It's going to get worse 2021 is going to be probably five-fold worse than 2020 ever was. We've got more lockdowns coming. People, this world wants to enslave us. That's what this whole pandemic was about. It was about locking down the economy so they could break the middle class. It was to widen the division between the haves and the have-nots. This world is going to enslave you. That's their goal, to enslave everybody. That's Satan's goal. But Jesus came for one purpose, to set you free from bondage. People, look around in your life. Look around in your life. People, I'm talking to me too. Trust me. I constantly have to self-inspect. I have to look at my life and say, man, what did that little slippery dude slip in on me? Because there's always something I can get rid of. The world is going to try to enslave you, but Jesus came to set you free. Remember John 8, 31, 32. Then Jesus said to the Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Anyway, listen, I just want to give you something to think about. Freedom. Don't forget, the world is going to try to enslave you, and it's only going to get worse. But Jesus came to set you free, and in him you have freedom. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.